Welcome to another ThingScript tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking our anchored volume weighted average price indicator and turning that into a scan. Now, if you don't already have the anchored VWAP indicator, you'll need it to follow along. It's completely free. You can download it on our website, tosindicators.com slash indicator slash anchored hyphen VWAP. And once you're there, click this green button, which allows you to download the code. Now, if I come into our charts to give you an idea of what we're looking to find with this scan, Starbucks is pretty much the picture perfect example. We have our March lows. We've anchored the volume weighted average price in that first candle going up after the March lows. I believe that's March 23, 2020, and this is off of a weekly time frame chart. We're currently seeing a pullback to that volume weighted average price line. And we're looking for this to act as a level of support for at least a shorter term bounce. That's the overall premise. Now, I think this works a little bit better in stocks that people are just looking at. There's more liquidity. There's more eyes on it. It's typically things like your S&P 100 stocks, the largest blue chip stocks you can think of. Now, of course, it, the scan will work on any indicator. But for the purposes of this exercise, we'll focus in on just the best of the best, if you will. Now, let's come into our code first. I'll click our studies icon. Inside of there, I have the anchored volume weighted average price indicator. I'll click the scroll icon to get the code, and we can copy paste all of this. Now, once I have that, I'll click cancel, get out of here, come inside of our scan tab. Let me remove what I previously have. So let's start with two basic filters here. I have our volume filter, which is looking for at least 500,000 or greater in volume. And then I have our price filter looking for at least $10 or greater in the stock price. Depending on the list that you choose, so in today's case, let's stick to something like, say, the S&P 100, those conditions might naturally take care of themselves and you don't even need them. Now, the one that we need to add is if we click Add Filter, then select Study, and inside of this, take the dropdown where it says ADX Crossover and choose Custom. This is where we can start to add in our anchored VWAP code. Now, keep in mind, this will only work in live money, the whole Custom Study filters in the Scan tab. If you're in paper trading, you will not be able to follow along with this and you'll need to switch to live money. Now inside of this filter, I'll click this uh, tab that says ThinkScript Editor. And here I'll paste in our anchored volume weighted average price code. Now we need to start to make some changes here in order to scan for what we're looking for. The first change is changing our aggregation period right up here, which is currently set to a daily by default. And we need to change that to a weekly aggregation period. The reason we need to change it to a weekly is inside of the scan tab, the daily time frame can usually scan back only about a year. Since we're in 2022, uh, our scan would be limited to only go back to 2021, but the low we're trying to scan for is in 2020, March of 2020. So by changing this to a weekly aggregation period, we can go back a bit further and that allows us to access the data point that we need. So that's step number one, changing the aggregation period. Step number two is changing the actual date that we'd like to anchor this to. Now we said the date we were looking for was March of 2020, and the exact date I think we were looking for was March 23rd. Uh, that date may change depending on the stock you're looking at, but I think the overall idea here is give me a list of stocks that meets this criteria, and March 23rd was a good date where price action in a majority of stocks had made that low and we started climbing up. So I'll stick with March 23rd here. Now, after that, we can leave the anchor time as is. That doesn't really matter for this scan since we're on a weekly time frame. The individual time on the day is not really going to be um, tagged or even making a difference here. Now, outside of that, the next thing we can change is remove all of this formatting code. We won't need that for our scan, so I can delete that. And I can change our plot variable for the anchored VWAP to instead be a def variable. That allows us to now take this variable and use it to create our own condition that we'd like to scan for. So let's go ahead and write that condition now. I'll start by saying something like plot uh, signal is equal to, and what I'm going to do here is use the low price of the weekly candle and say that the low of the current candle must be less than or equal to our anchored VWAP and our low from uh, our previous week, so that means last week, was greater than our anchored VWAP. So that essentially implies that last week we were above the anchored VWAP line, this week we have the low tagging below it. So that I think should give us the scan criteria for what we're looking for. Once I click OK here, let's go ahead and run this scan. 
and see what we get. So we have 10 different results. Starbucks is one of them, so that's a good sign so far. We expected Starbucks to meet the rule. Let's start by looking at Comcast here to see if that also meets the criteria we just plotted out. So I'll come to our chart tab, change this to Comcast. All right, so Comcast, we see something similar as well. We've anchored it to March 23rd, 2020. We have that line, the volume weighted average line being extrapolated. We're now pulling back into that line. Our previous week, we were above the volume weighted average price line. This current week, our low was below it. And we also closed above the volume weighted average price, even though that's not a condition we have. One other thing specific to Comcast that I thought was interesting, if you take that same Feb to March decline, you extrapolate it from our current high, we can see that we tagged that right here at 45.80. That was the low of this week, and we then bounce from there. If I come into a daily time frame to make this a bit more granular, we can see price action here tagged that. This looks a little bit less clean than the weekly time frame chart, but it gives you an idea of what actually took place in that last weekly candle. So, so far, we know that this is working on Comcast. We had Starbucks on the scan results tab, which we've already verified this with. Let's try a couple others, uh, maybe Walmart, MasterCard, and Boeing. So let's use Walmart here. Walmart, we see something similar, a little bit less drastic in terms of that March to uh, Feb to March decline, excuse me, but still meeting our conditions. We also had Boeing. Let's take a look at Boeing. Boeing, we haven't really made as much of a move as, say, Walmart or Starbucks, so it looks a little less appealing in terms of that decline, but we are still bouncing into that same line, the volume weighted average price, extrapolated from those lows, and we would hope to see at least a shorter term bounce here. I think this makes a lot more sense if you compare this to something like, say, Starbucks, where we're tagging that for the first time. It's a very clear uh, pull to the anchored volume weighted average price. And I would expect this to hold up a little bit better than something like, say, a Boeing. Come back into our scan tab. We can try one more. We said MasterCard. So let's try that. MasterCard, we see something similar. We bounced into the volume weighted average price once. Then we bounced away from there, where now the low is tagging one more time to the volume weighted average price, and we've closed substantially above the line. So all of these are meeting the scan criteria that we were looking for. Now, one additional thing I'll add for our volatility box members is using something like the edge signals indicator to try and confirm bounces away from the line. You can see how that worked last time inside of MasterCard. If I also come into Starbucks, for example, uh, look at a real scenario here. The example that I'd be looking at is, okay, so now we've hit our volume weighted average price. Let's narrow down our focus. We used our weekly time frame on the scan tab to get a list of stocks. Now on that daily time frame, once we start to see at least a bounce here, so in this case, we're seeing a lot of uh, extended Keltner channel wedges. We have the wedge first stopping to form currently with our previous uh, Friday's candle. So now if we start to see a bit of a bounce up, you would expect that to also be confirmed with the edge signals indicator, which gives you an additional further confirmation that we're looking for a move away from this current low. So that's one way you could play it. Of course, you could continue narrowing down your time frame here. So something like say even a one hour time frame, you won't be able to see that same anchored VWAP line, but using that one hour time frame, we can start to see the edge signal indicator on more granular basis. And that would be even more supported with something like say the market pulse turning green, which gives you an idea that we're now looking for a move away from this level. So let's bring this back up because I know we just went through that a little quickly. We started with our weekly time frame scan to get an idea of what is currently pulling back to our anchored volume weighted average price. Now to try and find bounces away from there, assuming you'd like to see some sort of a confirmation, you can narrow down to smaller time frame charts. Our next smaller one is something like a daily, or you can even continue uh, boiling this down to a four hour or one hour, whatever fits your bill, and use that to then see confirmation of moves away from that anchored VWAP level that we're looking at. A couple indicators that you might have that are good indications that the trend is changing, either using the edge signals indicator to try and get early entries or waiting for the market pulse to turn green on smaller time frame charts and using that to play the trend move up higher. All right, I hope this video was helpful for those of you looking to try and find or build a list of stocks rather that you think might be long overdue for at least a shorter term bounce and how you can find a list of those stocks fairly quickly that has basis using our previous March 2020 lows.
For those of you who would like to download this scan, if this is a little too much to follow along with, I'll leave a link in the description box that allows you to download and import these scans into your platform so you can start using it for your own trading. Alright, take care everyone, good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.